Automotive seating at 2350 Meyer, Troy, Michigan, 48084. Support. Is there a second? Second. Uh, okay. A motion moved to revoke the industrial facilities exemption certificate for Forest CI. I might add that it's staff's recommendation to vacate yep. the district and revoke the exemption. Um, <clears throat> a vote, please, or discussion? A vote, please, Mrs. Bittner. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Mayor Daniels? Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Henderson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Motion passes. We move on to regular business now. There are no board or committee nominations or appointments, so we move to an agreement to provide fleet maintenance services to the city of Centerline. Would someone please move the proposed resolution? Madam Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Resolve that Troy City Council hereby approves the interlocal, uh, the interlocal, um, interlocal service agreement for the City of Troy to provide fleet maintenance services for the City of Centerline. The City Clerk and Mayor are authorized to execute the, the agreements. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, the uh, discussion? Madam Mayor, just real briefly, it's a great thing doing here, but one question I'm always asked is, well, does this mean we get bumped in line if there's a issue with one of our vehicles? and let the public know that it's right in the contract that Centerline understands and acknowledges that Troy's personnel will first service Troy vehicles. So it's not like we're gonna have someone that jumps, jumps a line if, if a vehicle comes from Centerline. We're still at the front of the line, but we're gonna be able to, to use our staff efficiently. So it's a great thing. Very well stated. A vote please, Mrs. Bittner. Mayor Daniels. Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Henderson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is a resolution to schedule a public hearing for the City of Royal Oak Hospital Finance Authority. Um, what's at stake is the City of Royal Oak is asking that a public hearing be held on January 9th because the City of Troy has a legal obligation to approve the issuance of bonds whose proceeds might be used to repay the City of Troy for the construction of the wonderful Troy Beaumont Hospital. Would someone like to move the re proposed resolution? I move the resolution as printed. Councilman Fleming moves the resolution. Second? Support. New Pro Tem supports. Uh, discussion? A vote, please, Mrs. Bittner. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Henderson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Mayor Daniels? Yes. Motion passes. We now move to the consent, <laughs> consent agenda items. Are there any consent agenda items that the council would like to remove for discussion prior to the vote? If no items are removed, then we'll just go ahead to, uh, on the vote. Um, could we have a uh, resolution? Madam Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis. Resolve that Troy City Council hereby approves all items on the consent agenda as presented. Second? Second. Moved by Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis, seconded by Councilman Teets that uh, we move all the agenda, consent agenda items. Dis do we need discussion? Vote, please, Mrs. Bittner. Councilmember Fleming? Yes. Councilmember Henderson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Yes. Councilmember Slater? Yes. Councilmember Teets? Yes. Mayor Daniels? Yes. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Motion passes. Uh, let's see. We are now, uh, there are no public hearings, memorandums. We'll go to council referrals. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? <coughs> Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I think it's pretty cut and dry. Um, it's actually just a continuation of what I discussed at the last meeting, um, and, and I had indicated that I was going to bring forward a code of ethics. There was one signed in October of 2010. It was um, the culmination of a, a long period of work over a couple of different councils together um, to come up with something that all seven of us in 2010 uh, were comfortable with. Um, it, basically what I've done, I know that there was a, a comment during public comment here about one of the items that was listed in here. Um, that was actually something from the original 
uh, code of ethics that we signed in 2010. The only two additions that I made um, are listed at the, at the uh, very bottom of the code of ethics here, and that is one uh, that cautions council members to use care and caution when using electronic media as would be exercised when speaking face-to-face -face or through written memoranda. And there's also an additional um, component that uh, re would require council members to avoid use of derogatory or um, denigrating language. So uh, if there is an issue with the wording, um, other council members share that issue uh, with Mr. Clark regarding the wording um, uh, that he described in public comment, I would be open to discussion. Uh, otherwise, I think it's very cut and dry. I, I tried to um, put together a resolution that I think accurately stated what we would hope to accomplish by signing this. Um, if there are questions or comments, I would be more than happy to discuss, but obviously I spent some time making sure that this could be on the agenda this week because I'd like us to move forward post haste. So um, whether that means we're in a position to approve the resolution today so that the code of ethics can be on the table for us to sign at the next meeting, obviously that would be my goal. Um, but if there's a need for further discussion right now so that we can come to a consensus um, so that this is available on the next agenda, uh, the resolution in regular business, I'll, I guess I'll have to settle for that. So uh, any feedback, obviously, this may have been the first um, that everyone had even seen the original code of ethics. Uh, I know I, I referenced it the last time, but um, I'm ready for discussion even at 11.55. In the spirit of time, I would say we just move the resolution. I don't see any reason for discussion. Do you, does anyone have any items to discuss? If I may. Councilman uh, Henderson? I, I guess the, the one item that was mentioned, you know, special, there's a lot of special interest groups in Troy. And, you know, that we, I, I guess that the wording there is maybe a little strong. Uh, I don't disagree that, you know, we certainly don't want to have, you know, name the group come down on us and, you know, put that much pressure on us to make a decision, you know, nor should we act that way. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, what, I don't have any special wording that I would like to have in place of it, but I get the point. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Councilman Fleming? I just want to think about it. Maybe we can vote on this the next meeting, if that's okay. Mayor Pro Tem, could, or do you want to do this tonight? The uh, only thing I see on, on the item that Mr. Clark brought up, it's, we, the wording is based on available facts and independent judgment rather than succumbing to the influence of individuals or special interest groups. I think we that doesn't say we don't listen to the individuals or special interest groups, but it's just saying as a code of ethics, we won't succumb just because they're individual special interest we, But we listen to everybody. Right. Saying we're not listening, but everyone has free speech and equal access to us through public comment and whatever other methods. I don't know if that's a big issue, but I could be missing the point. And I have no problem with your language. I mean, that's okay. D just a quick response. Um, I, kn I know we did have an opportunity to discuss this before when we sat on council. Yeah. And I think that we can all take this for what it's worth. I, I really think that the focus here in this language, and, and um, I think that this is, was the motivation when we added it in in 2010, and, and you were part of those discussions, was that um, we were basically going to use all the, the powers that we had and the avenues that we have to gather information and come to conclusions using independent judgment rather than only taking on that information from a, one or two or a, mm -hmm. some individuals or a special interest groups. So I think if you take it in the totality of it and what it's trying to say, I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to say. If you try to really pick it apart here, obviously, you know, we are going to listen to individuals. Those are our constituents. And we are going to listen to special interest groups that come and speak to us like some of them may have tonight. But I think in general, if we, if we keep in mind what, what we're tasked to do, um, which is using independent judgment and considering all avenues of available facts, then that's really, I think that's really the important piece there. And I just would really like to get to a point, if we have to have a, a discussion about it tonight, if there's specific language that we have an issue with, for the most part, everybody has seen yep. this before. And so I, I would like to put this conversation to rest tonight. Councilman Teets? Not related to this, but do we need some sort of continuing something? <clears throat> if you want it, 
sorry, um, you would need to suspend the rules if you wanted to continue the conversation after midnight. Just to go through the rest of the agenda quickly? In, in order to prevent the rest of the items to be carried over to the next meeting. Let's, let's do that in order to just whip through this quick. So, uh, suspend the rules. I'd like to suspend the rules. Yeah. I'll second that. I'll second that. I apologize. Okay. It, yeah, that was, that was all I had. That's fine. So discussion, are we ready for a vote? Um, this now, now, we haven't actually put the resolution. Did you put the resolution on or did somebody second it? This is the rules. Okay, suspend the rules. All right. Yep. Vote. Council Member Henderson? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Yes. Council Member Slater? Yes. Council Member Teets? Yes. Mayor Daniels? Yes. Council Member Campbell? Yes. Council Member Fleming? Yes. Motion passes. So we'll continue on after midnight. Now we're going to finish up the <coughs> resolution. Is you're making the resolution to uh, adopt your code of ethics? Is that, Miss mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis? Uh, yeah, I would obviously move that resolution. Yes. Someone second. <coughs> Support. Okay. Discussion. Vote, please, Mrs. Bittner. Mayor Pro Tem McGinnis. Yes. Council Member Slater. Yes. Council Member Teets? Yes. Mayor Daniels? Uh, pass, yes. Excuse me. I'm tired. Yes. Council Member Campbell? Yes. Council Member Fleming? Yes. Council Member Henderson? Yes. I knew the motion was going to pass. <laughs> motion passes. <coughs> um, now we are at council comments. Does anyone have any comments that they want to make at this point? I, I have one quick one, and it's just a. Uh, um, news of interest for uh, citizens uh, and I was asked to pass this information along um, that due to uh, or in the need of uh, wanting to supplement critically low blood supplies in the area the city of Troy is sponsoring two Red Cross blood drives on Wednesday December 28th and Thursday December 29th uh, that will be in room 305 from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the Troy Community Center uh, which is located at 3179 Livernois. Uh, the Troy Affa uh, Community Affairs Office at City Hall is now scheduling appointments. Uh, you can call to schedule your appointment at 248-524-1147. Um, you can also sign up to do this by visiting uh, www.redcrossblood.org and the access code for that site is TROY. So in the spirit of giving, um, if you haven't had enough after the holiday season, please uh, schedule an appointment to, to give blood on the 28th or the 29th. Anyone else? Two. Councilman Teets? Um, I'd like to schedule a study session about the Publicly Funded Health Insurance Contributions Act, which would be N5 for some point. I, I don't even know when we have open time to do a study session, so I'm all ears when that would be available. Yeah. Well, we have the study session on the rules of procedure on the 5th of January. When would the next meeting be? Mrs. Bittner? The next, is it the 9th? The 9th, the 9th, yeah, the 9th of January. January. That's and also then, when the study session is. And then when is the next meeting? After that would be January 23rd. Well, January, 23rd January 23rd sounds fine with me. We can make it as a regular item after the uh, <coughs> a study item, essentially, after the regular order of business. Sure. Okay. So, second, second question I had. Do we have a study session to discuss the DDA bond situation? I, I get a little concerned in my stomach when I think about junk bonds and Troy and AAA bond status, and so I'd like to know what our status is. Uh, in fact, uh, timely question, we're going to be asking uh, uh, Council for an executive session uh, in January. January 23rd. January 23rd, as a matter of fact. 23rd. There you go. We'll talk to the mayor in advance as the mayor is a member of the DDA board as well, in advance of the 23rd. Thanks. Okay. And if I may, Your Honor, uh, Open Troy is now online. It's under, you go under Quick Links, and it's just under the dashboard. So we made our mid-December... Uh, Objective. A number of residents have come to me and asked about what our snow removal procedure is going to look like. And I recall that the previous council reinstated the 24 hour snow removal services. I, I just wondered if, um, being as this is one of the key components to public safety, 
Manager Zerlig, um, the residents would like to know if that means that all of the streets in Troy are going to be uh, cleared within 24 hours after a four inch snowfall or more? That's correct. Okay, good, good. That policy has been published uh, many times. Okay, good, good. Um, I would like very much if you could give me and possibly the other new council members a tour of the public works um, facility to see the equipment and maybe get a, a, a understanding of the protocol and, and uh, at some point after January. Um, we'll, be, we'll be happy to do that. I know that. Uh, uh, Councilman Henderson uh, uh, visited, I think, almost all of our facilities already and we'll be happy, to, anyone that, that wants a tour, uh, we'll be happy to set that up. Okay, good. One other issue. I attended the Rochester Hills City Council meeting last week and I was really impressed with some of their um, procedures and one that I would like to mention because I think it's important is that uh, when the mayor goes down to offer a proclamation, the entire council goes down with them and they stand off to the side and after the proclamations are read, the recipients of the proclamation go by and you get to individually shake hands and offer your own gratitude for the services provided. And the reason why I think it's important that I ask for discussion about this today is because we're going to be having proclamations to the retired Troy police officers. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be. Have, have we scheduled a time uh, for that? Cindy Stewart normally contacts people that retire with a certain amount of years of service and then they decide we leave it up to them if they want to come down for a, pro a proclamation, and then if they do, we'll we normally do something for them. Okay. But, uh, Cindy was on vacation, but uh, I'm sure she knows about it by now. So I was just wondering if council would like to comment on whether they would like to go down to the um, to by the podium when we offer proclamations, so that you can have an individual opportunity to offer your gratitude. Sure. Seems it, it really seemed to work out nicely in Rochester Hills, so we'll try that next. Um, that. Uh, there are no other items on the agenda this evening. Did anyone else have any other comments they wanted to make? Um, we'd like to extend our wishes for a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and special winter celebrations of all kinds. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.